Hello, I'm Max Davis. Welcome to my demonstration speech. Today, I will be showing you how to properly bench press, squat, and deadlift. First, we're going to start off with the bench press. Alrighty. Alright, so the first thing you're going to do is retract the scapulas. You're going to push your shoulder blades back, and it's essentially going to take your shoulders out of the equation. By keeping a flat back, it puts a lot of stress on your shoulders, makes it easier to injure your shoulders. Also, by retracting your scapula, um, you're going to be more tight on the bench and you won't shift from side to side. So I'm going to show you how you would properly do this. You're going to start, like to hold the bar, a little mm -hmm. bend under the lower back. You got a little bend going there. You want to keep your shoulders perfectly even with the bar. and. That is how you're going to retract your scapula. Then you want to tighten your glutes. And along with tightening your glutes is where you use leg drive. Leg drive is going to help you here. Oh, tight. So by tightening your glutes, keeping your legs slightly wide, but a little further in, this is how you will perfectly be able to do one rep on the bench press. Now, if you saw, it may have been hard to see, but I tried to represent a perfect, an ideal bar path. The ideal bar path is slightly slanted, um, along with um, retracting your scapulas, pushing your chest further forward. It's going to decrease the amount of distance the bar is actually going, just making it easier to perfectly do one rep on the bench press. That right there, ladies and gentlemen, is how you perfectly do a bench press. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the deadlift. I'm going to show you how to properly do a deadlift. So first, you're gonna to wanna to start with your feet positioned in the middle of the bar. That's where I like to start. Your shoulders are slightly over. Here you can get a better look at it. Your shoulders are gonna end up slightly over the bar. Now. As I go down, I go down to about the point where my shins touch the bar, and that's, that's a good position for my hips. Now you're going to want to keep your back straight as well, otherwise if you curve with your back like this, you could seriously injure your lower back. Now, um, now I'm going to go over the, other, the multiple grips you can do. There's the double overhand grip, there's a mixed grip, that's about it. Um, I personally, the mixed grip, I feel like double overhand, my hands will slip a little bit. Um, I don't have quite the grip strength to hold it double overhand, so I go with mixed grip. Now, I will show you how to properly do it. Hands positioned right outside the feet, and then up we go. You're going to drive with your hips at the lockout. And alrighty, so the first lift that I showed you was conventional, that is the conventional deadlift. Now I'm going to show you the sumo deadlift. Now the sumo deadlift is performed typically, um, it's known as an easier exercise. Um, it isolates your hamstrings and it's a, puts a lot less stress on your back. Um, so let me just show you how you can properly set up. Firstly, your hand position is the one thing that you'll notice that is different. The first, in, in a conventional deadlift, your hands are going to go on the outside of your legs, whereas in a sumo deadlift, your legs are going to be much wider. Bar still just about middle of the feet, um, but this time your hands are going to go on the inside. Um, the bar path is typically a lot shorter, so that's why it's known as an easier exercise, but I suppose if you don't have very strong hamstrings, so people with Weaker hamstrings find it difficult to do a sumo deadlift, but in general, it's known as the easier way to deadlift. Let me demonstrate for you. And that is how you do a sumo deadlift. All right, next, I'm going to show you how to properly do a squat. First, you're gonna set up with the bar right on your upper back. Preferably on the trap muscles, as it's more comfortable, there's more cushion right there. So you're going to set up, walk yourself out a little bit. Now, 
the first part, the first important thing to note is the foot position. Um, the foot position, typically if you like, it doesn't really matter how wide your feet are um, or how narrow, that's all on preference, but the toes point out helps keep your legs parallel, your knees parallel. So then what you're going to do with a little, your toes slightly pointed out, you're going to squat about 90 degrees. That's at least 90 degrees. You can do squats for lower depth, more depth, I mean, but um, at least 90 degrees would be a proper squat. And Excellent. then you're going to re-rack your weight. Typically not backwards, but there we go. Okay, now I'm going to add basically the most alpha lift there is in the gym, the Jefferson deadlift. Personally, my favorite deadlift variation. Now, let me go over the setup for you with the Jefferson deadlift. If you're, if you're doing this at your local gym, you either are the biggest guy at the gym or the strongest guy at the gym, or you own the gym. So, let me go over how your feet are, are going to be placed. Your front foot's gonna go a little over the bar, back foot pointed outward like this. Now, you're gonna bend over. This lift, mind you, is pretty much all hamstrings. So, if you're trying to work your hamstrings, this is the go-to lift, in my opinion. Now, hands even on each side of the bar. Your knee might come in a little bit, that is okay. Back as straight as possible. Up we go, through the legs. So beautiful, so majestic. And back down we go. That is the Jefferson deadlift, ladies and gentlemen.